everybody. Uh, my name is David Emmer, and I'm one of the pastors here at Celebration. Well, uh, a little bit of a pop quiz as we get started this morning, and it's just one, one question. The answer is easy. I promise you, it is not a trick question, okay? What is the name of our country? Okay, very good. Y'all are like, he's tricking me somehow. I know he is. No, I, well, give it to me again. The United States of America. Very good. Okay. Everybody paid attention in that very first civics class, okay? Now, the name, the United States of America, first penned, uh, history says, by Thomas Jefferson. The occasion, the Declaration of Independence, the very first line, reads the unanimous declaration of the 13 United States of America. A little bit later, in September 1776, Congress passed a resolution affirming that that was the name of the country. The United States of America. Now, I want you to think about that name. Let it roll around in your brain just a little bit. Okay, so right now, just kind of play the recording. Can you hear it? The United States of America. The United States of America. You got it? You with me? As you play through that name, do you think that unity is supposed to be important to our country just based on the name? What do you think? Yes. Because it's in the name, right? I mean, unity is so important to our country that in 1776, when the country was established with the Declaration of Independence, they put the word unit or un, un, unit, <laughs> unity or united right in the name. You think unity matters? It matters a lot. Let me just ask you, do you think that we have a unity problem in our country? I think the evidence would say, yeah. We don't seem to be able to agree on much of anything right now as a country. We're deeply divided. Right now, where we are as a country, if the left has an idea, no matter what it is, the right says that idea's got to be wrong. If the right has an idea, the left says that idea's got to be wrong, simply because the other person had it. And even within the context of left and right, you can't be left enough to make some people happy. You can't be right enough to make other people happy doesn't seem like where you are right now we as a country seem to be failing the unity test now I would submit that unity matters a lot to a country but I would also suggest that it is absolutely mission critical in the life of a healthy church there's no way that a church can enjoy the kind of health it's supposed to be, it's intended to enjoy and there's no way that it can hit if you will, the mission that God has given it without unity. And because unity is not the default setting, because unity takes work, because it's hard, I would submit that every single person in the church needs to have the idea of unity on their mind all the time. It just needs to be kind of cooking on the forefront. What do I need to be doing to help this church be more unified? Now, the problem of unity inside the church, inside the country, whatever, it's not new. This is an old problem. It's an old issue. It's been around a long, long time. In fact, when you come to the letter of 1 Corinthians, Paul, as he's writing this letter to this group, number one problem he's going to identify is unity. Look at very carefully as you look at verse 10. Look at these two kind of key words there. You see the word division in verse 10, and you see the word rivalry in verse 11. Now, these are big words, they're powerful words in the original language. They can be used to describe the approach of an enemy army coming to attack your city. I think this was a serious problem. And I'm, by the way, I'm not making this up. Another possible use of those two words in conjunction is it describes the effect of mutually hostile politicians that seek to draw citizens into confusion. I am not making that up. Wow, could that not be us today? My next thought as I'm working on this was, what is the issue, right? What's the big deal? What's got them so deeply divided? These people are divided, and they're divided behind particular teachers or pastors or leaders inside the church, and they're divided over who performed their baptism. And you look at that and you go, Really? So they're divided legally. They're divided theologically. They're divided morally. 
They're divided economically from top to bottom. This church is divided. And Paul, Paul writes into this and he speaks into this as job one. Because he knows that if you're divided, if you're not united, two big problems begin to arise. One, when you are divided, when there's no unity in the church, the church takes a huge hit in its reputation. Second of all, disunity is a major hit to your, uh, your effectiveness. You can't really do anything if you're all disunited because if, you, if there's disunity in the church, then we can't pull together. We can't accomplish a common goal. We can't get anything done. Now, is disunity still a problem in our culture today? What do you think? Yeah, I believe it is. Second question, is disunity a problem for the American church today? What do you think? I think it probably is. Unity is not conformity, okay? Unity is not uniformity. It's not sameness. Every single person in this room has a different personal history. You got different personalities. You got different skills. So seeking unity in the church is not about suppressing all of those wonderful things that make us unique. That's not unity. Biblical unity exists when the church is able to harness all of the uniqueness that each one of us brings to bear and begin to work for a common goal. And that's the beauty of the unity of the church. I don't have to lose who I am in order to be a part of the church. We're all focused together on the gospel. And God then works through us and he accomplishes his glory. So in unity and diversity must work together or one will destroy the other. Unity without diversity is uniformity, but diversity without unity is anarchy. The church needs both unity and diversity to function in this world, right? It's an important thing. So if unity is so important, what do I need to be doing to bring about unity inside the church, okay? Uh, let me just give it to you in a nutshell. And if you remember only one thing from the day, this is what I want you to latch onto. Here it is, okay? Collaborate, don't separate. So let me give you some homework, and I'm gonna tell you what. If you take this homework seriously, I promise you two things. One, I promise you it's really hard. Second of all, I promise you, it will grow you in your faith in Jesus Christ, okay? So here's the homework for this week, and again, it's really hard, okay? Here we are, first step. Do a reality check on arrogance. Step two, second piece of homework for this week. Practice forbearance. Now what is forbearance, what does that even mean? So it says, hey, you wanna build unity in the church? endure one another. All right, let me give you one more. One more little piece of homework, and these get hard. I told you these are hard. Look at this next one here, okay? Ask yourself, do I place God's priorities ahead of my own? And you all, I just want you to imagine what happens to our church. What happens to our church if we find that measure of unity? What happens if we just embrace all of our uniqueness all of our peculiarities. We say, hey, we are a family and we're all dialed in on this one thing. We're all dialed in on the gospel. That's what we're about. And so I'm gonna look at you and I'm gonna embrace you even though you're, you're different than me and I'm gonna embrace you and we're gonna work together and we're gonna be united in the gospel of Jesus Christ. And that's our common goal. And if we do that, if we bring that commitment to the church body, I want you to just think of the impact that the church then has on your friends and your family and your neighbors, people that you care about. The people that it would just break your heart to think of them not being in heaven with you. Think about the unity of the church and what it would mean for them. It's huge, it's huge. So can we together can we come together as a body and just say, you know what? Here at Celebration Baptist Church, we come from all different walks of life. We've got different personalities, different accents. Skins of our, the color of our skin isn't always the same. 
political views aren't necessarily always the same. But we are united behind the gospel of Jesus Christ. And nothing, nothing is greater than that.